Working at the front of the radiator support, remove the two T20 torque fasteners from the intake duct, as indicated by the green arrows. Working at the intake air duct connection to the air filter housing, use a small flathead screwdriver. Release the retaining tabs on each side and pull the duct off. This is a normally aspirated engine shown here. For turbocharged engines, the duct on the radiator supports unscrews in the same as the previous step. The duct for the air filter housing is also removed the same way. The air filter housing though is in a different spot. Follow the duct and release the tabs and remove the duct. Then pull the intake duct out of the radiator support and remove it from the vehicle. Green arrow. Working at the wiper cowl, remove the plastic cover using a small flathead screwdriver. Green arrow. Working at the wiper cowl, remove the strut brace E20 fastener. Green arrow. Then remove the strut brace E14 fastener. Yellow arrow. Once the fasteners are removed, remove the right section of the strut brace from the vehicle. Working at the back of the valve cover, squeeze the breather hose release tabs and pull the hose off the valve cover. Next, you will have to disconnect all six ignition coils electrical connectors, green arrows. Unlock the ignition coil electrical connectors by pulling the tab up 90 degrees, green arrow. Next, slide the electrical connector out of the ignition coil, green arrow, then remove all ignition coils. Remove the ignition coil from the cylinder head by pulling straight up. If the coil resists, twist it to help break it free from the spark plug. The ignition coil rubber boot can become stuck to the spark plug over time. You can also use a flathead screwdriver to lever the coil up and out of the cylinder head. Be very careful using this method as the coil is made of plastic and easily damages. Unplug the eccentric shaft sensor electrical connector by detaching the locking tabs with a small flathead screwdriver and pulling it up and out of the sensor, if equipped. Note, if there is oil in the connector, the eccentric shaft sensor must be replaced. Next, I like to remove the e-box cover. You don't have to do this, but it provides extra clearance when you remove the valve cover. Unlock the two sliding locks, the green arrows, then disconnect the locking tabs, yellow arrows, and remove the e-box lid. Pull the wiring harness out of the mount, green arrow. Remove the two 8mm ignition wiring ground fasteners, green arrows. Detach the ignition wiring harness from the valve cover by disconnecting the locking tabs, green arrows, and pulling up. Lay the harness aside. Next, remove all six ignition coil insulators from the valve cover. This also provides more clearance when removing the valve cover. Use a 90 degree snap ring pliers, compress the insulators, and slide them up and out of the valve covers. Do this for all six ignition coil insulators. The fuel injection harness has to be removed next. The harness is one solid plastic connector with individual connectors for each fuel injector. There are wire clips that hold the harness onto each fuel injector. You can disconnect each wire clip, then pull the harness up off the fuel injectors. I like to use an alternative method. Use a small pry bar and lever between the harness, green arrow, and the cylinder head. When doing this, you have to use one swift action to disconnect the harness. Once the first two unclip, the remaining clips can be disconnected by pulling up. Be careful when using this method. If you lever at an angle or force an injector to move, you may damage the fuel injector. Lift the fuel injector wiring harness up and lay it aside. Remove the Valvetronic motor, if equipped. Please see the link at the end of this video on how to perform that work. Working at the center of the valve cover, remove the three 10 millimeter mounting fasteners as indicated by the green arrows. Remove the 19 E8 fasteners from the perimeter of the valve cover, green arrows. Note the location of each fastener. There are a few that have special collars on them. You want to make sure you get these reinstalled in the correct position. Check the valve cover fasteners with a magnet. If they are aluminum, discard. You will need new fasteners when installing. Then lift the valve cover up and off the cylinder head. Feed the valve cover out from under the wiring harness and remove from engine. 
Once the valve cover is removed, check that the breather connection on the valve cover did not fall off. It's quite common for this to happen. Look in the area indicated by the yellow arrow and the cap, green arrow, will stay on the cylinder head if it fell off. If the breather connection on the valve cover did fall off, use crazy glue to reattach it to the valve cover, green arrow. Thoroughly clean the valve cover, then install a new gasket into the gasket recess in the valve cover. Gently lever the eccentric shaft sensor seal out of the valve cover using a flathead screwdriver, as indicated by the green arrow. Don't install the new seal yet. Leaving it out while installing the valve cover makes the installation easier. Place the valve cover on the cylinder head and install all the fasteners finger tight. Then tighten the fasteners in a crisscross pattern. With the valve cover installed, press in the new eccentric shaft seal into the valve cover. I like to use a socket to press the seal in. A 30 millimeter socket should work depending on the brand of socket. You may need something larger or smaller. This photo shows the eccentric shaft seal installed properly, green arrow. Reinstall the ignition coils and install and route the wiring harness as previously installed. Remove the two T30 torque fasteners from the Valvetronic motor gasket, green arrow. Using a flathead screwdriver, gently lever the gasket out of the valve cover. You will not need a lot of force to do this. The gasket will pop right out. Once the gasket is free from the valve cover, remove it and discard it. When installing the new gasket, be sure the black stripe is facing up, green arrow. Then press into the valve cover until fully seated. Install the Valvetronic motor in reverse order of removing. Use a 4mm Allen bit to rotate the motor clockwise while installing it into the cylinder head. Once flush with the cylinder head, install the fasteners and tighten. Remember, if you removed aluminum fasteners, replace them each time they are removed. Be sure the wiring harness is routed as it was before and the engine covers are properly aligned. Turn the key to the on position for 30 seconds, then off, then on again for 30 seconds before starting the vehicle. When repairs are performed on the Valvetronic assembly, the limit stops have to be relearned. You will need access to a BMW scan tool to do this procedure. The limit stops are the mechanical limit stops, end to end of the rotation of the eccentric shaft. The DME records these stops via the eccentric shaft sensor to determine the mechanical adjustment limits of the eccentric shaft. With that said, when removing the motor to replace the gasket, you are not changing the mechanical position of any Valvetronic assembly components. A relearn is not always needed. Now use this with caution and when in doubt, perform the relearn. Do your research and check with up-to-date repair information before beginning. Install the remaining items in reverse order of removal. Be sure all wiring harnesses are properly connected and routed as before. Start and idle the engine. Inspect the valve cover and surrounding area for oil leaks. Once complete, reinstall the engine covers. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article, along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.